Freedom Radio app. Live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Freedom Radio Hour. I'm your host, DJ Adam Cruz, and I have my fantastic co-host here. What up, beautiful people? Eddie Nicholas here. Welcome to 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sedan. Boom, 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 mm-hmm. boom. What up, Adam? What is going on in the world of business, music, and entertainment? I'm telling you, the music business is a flutter, as we always say. But mm-hmm. first, we got to let our viewers and our listeners know that the Freedom Radio Hour is here, not only giving you fantastic music, but we're also trying to give you that music business news and trends from around the globe. This time around, we have three hot topics. Which one do you want to cover first? Do you want to talk about the German courts and what they've decided to do about copyright infringement? Do you want to talk about Pandora and all the drama, as we always say? And uh, Or do you want to know about some of the predictions that they're saying will come out of 2016? Well, you know, I'm always about drama. So let's start with Pandora and their drama. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I know. Let me ins- uh, I'll insert some oh, soap yes, opera music yes, right here, yes. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, what's been happening over the last couple of years, we've talked about this in previous episodes, mm-hmm. Pandora is un- is not unlike Spotify and other streaming services out there. And we've been trying to break down why there are so many out there. And in the future, it seems like we're going to expect to see more of them coming out. Mm-hmm. We had Tidal, that's uh, the one that Jay-Z is behind. You have YouTube... Uh, Music Key, that's now YouTube Red. Uh, you have Spotify, and Pandora's been doing its thing for a while. It's one of the earliest ones, actually. Mm-hmm. Well, Pandora, for the last couple of years, has been uh, reporting growth. So they've been taking advantage of this earnings uh, report, and they're saying, okay, for 2013 and 2014, let's expand our business. What do, we, what do I mean? Well, primarily, as we know, Pandora was like a thing you would listen to on mm-hmm. the device or whatever it was. And it was like uh, just whatever was on there. You would hit a topic or, or a genre or an artist and it would play that and then other stuff. You couldn't really kind of go back and forth, but you could listen to it. Well, it's kind of expanded. Now they bought uh, over the course of the years Ticketfly, which is like a ticket master mm-hmm. here in the States, a very a powerful outfit. Uh, so they bought Ticketfly, which is a competitor to that. Um, they also bought like artist platforms. Mm-hmm. So if you're on there and you're using Pandora, now there's this ability to like see databases and see where people are playing your music mm-hmm. around mm-hmm. the world. So they're into buying artist um, servicing kind of platforms and they're also into buying this Ticketfly thing. Well, 2013 and 2014 saw some growth, like I'm saying. They were happy. They're like, dude, we got like 50% growth. We have to do something and expand our business. And we'll talk about whether that was a good or bad thing in a second. Mm -hmm. But now, come 2015, the numbers have been plummeting. We don't, they don't really know why that's happening, but the shares uh, at the end of 2014 evidently were at like $35. Now the shares are worth $12. Well, you know, it sounds like to me they're using invisible, invisible digital dollars. <laughs> I was just, I was, you know what? That's so true. I was, I was thinking the very same thing mm-hmm. that, that what they're doing right now is. Um, uh, kind of playing around with like fake money to a yeah. certain degree, you know. For example, now that they've been plummeting in terms of their dollars, they've uh, gone ahead and they have gotten a lot of money. They started to borrow a lot of money, and what they're saying to their investors is, "Let us borrow some money from you, and we'll pay you an equity down the line." That's to say that we are banking on this business model that we've uh, mm-hmm. entangled ourselves into, including this Ticketmaster concert thing, the app, the Pandora Music, blah blah blah. Um, but Pandora is not without its own drama because you know Pandora uh, had to is is still in a legal fight because you yeah. know they're trying to fight that like how much how the much, rate mm-hmm. the rate that they pay you know that's the poultry little dot it's like mm-hmm. literally fighting over point zero zero one four versus point zero zero one one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, so what's basically what's been happening is uh, there's Pandora's in a lot of hot water right now around uh, how much they're going to pay out their rates, and they also been dealing with. Um, Oh, we have a little clip here. But basically, that's what I want to talk about with Pandora. They don't know what they're going to do for 2016. They don't really have a strong plan yet about how to deal with the legal fight around the the, 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 the numbers that they're mm-hmm. paying. Um, and they're also around, they're, they're trying to figure out how they're going to salvage this this money that they've now borrowed. And considering that the, the shares are, are dwindling in terms of value, they don't know what's 2016 going to be like. And that kind of leads me to my next thing. And maybe it might be time for a break, but it's... It'd be a very interesting time to see what 2016 brings in terms of, uh, you know, what predictions might be in a music game. If you were to consider something, what would you think, Eddie, would be one of your biggest predictions for 2016? Hmm. 
You know, it's so hard to think because, you know, there's so many that we want to predict. But, you know, I predict that there'll be better outcome for artists as far as accumulating and getting um, what's rightfully theirs. I do think there's going to be a tie um, toward that. And again, I also think as artists and as other people, we need to be, again, you know, I always say if you want to get something, you got to be at the table. That's right. And if these streaming people are doing what they do, then again, as I asked you before in one of our early episodes, how do we become a member of that streaming system where we can bank on right. making sure that when st our stuff or anybody's material is streamed, that they are getting a percentage of what the people who are streaming are right. getting. Right, and also you made a really good point in one of the episodes about uh, getting being at the table in terms of the lobbying power mm -hmm. too. When the decision, decisions are being made for rates and for what things are going to be cost-wise, cost there needs to be a stronger lobby on our behalf about what, what what do we do with the artists and how do we better compensate them? Mm -hmm. Let's take a break. We'll come right back here at Freedom Radio Hour. We're going to break down more of the Pandora outfit, but we're going to jump right into what the court, the German court system has to say about copyright infringement. And then we're going to talk some more about some of our predictions for 2016. Right here where? 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sedan. I think somehow. Let's try that again. Where? 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sedan. Freedom Radio Hour, live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. What up, beautiful people, and welcome back. Capital Radio 91.6 FM. I'm one of your hosts, Eddie Nicholas, and I'm so glad that I'm sitting with my good buddy over here. Adam Cruz, and we're live and direct right here on the Freedom Radio Hour, your number one source for music, business news, and trends from around the, the globe. globe. We were Before we broke, we were talking about Pandora and some of their mm -hmm. legal troubles. They're trying to figure out um, the rate that, that they'll pay artists. That right now we're paid a, a fraction of a penny per stream. Pandora is uh, fighting over whether to pay 0 0.0014 per stream versus 0 0.0011. Mm -hmm. It's really technical, but basically it's paltry dollars, and they're basically uh, fighting over three point three percent, point three cents, basically over over what's happening. But jumping forward, there has to be a big issue going on in German courts for them to decide on the following. Evidently, German courts have been figuring out how to deal with digital piracy. You know, right now, the way we do it is uh, how we fight piracy is we use uh, a, an identifying mm -hmm. uh, a number that links to a computer. And that is called an IP address. And everybody's kind of uh, come to know that term to mean that that's the uh, little numbers that, that kind of trace back to your computer. Well, that also means that that's also relevant for servers. So when you're think, thinking about digital piracy and how to fight it, you're essentially uh, trying to trace servers mm -hmm. and then trying to get to the source of where the piracy mm -hmm. is coming from and then pursue that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the German courts have decided to switch this up entirely. No longer are, uh, say, individual outfits or, or labels or using their own techniques to try to find the culprits. Now the German courts are saying that the ISPs are, cul are, are culpable. What are ISPs? That's an acronym for Internet Service Provider. That's like over there, that's like the Comcast and mm -hmm. Verizons and um, of such of the world. Just what we, we use a cable provider to access the internet here in the States. Um, in Germany, their version, uh, they're basically, uh, the courts are saying that those companies need to find the culprits. How do they uh, propose they do that? That's what the companies are saying. They're saying, look, you have that network, you have the ability, you have the infrastructure where you can find not only the IP address, but the, sor the true source of it. Because what's happening now, evidently, is that the numbers change, the identifying numbers mm -hmm. that link to a computer, it changes over time because they've gotten real fancy with the So basically, for, so from what you're saying, that by going, if, if the court, German courts are saying that by going through it that way, it basically sounds like they would attract the first signal. Right. So in other words, they wanted to go back to track that for where it right. first, where it originally came from right. before it gets before it gets changed over, and changed or over. Right. They need to know where that first signal came from. Right, because now when you when you don't do that, evidently you leave it open to uh, either either masking or making the IP address uh, untraceable, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So they're putting it on the courts, but the com the companies are saying like, well, who's going to pay for this? Because this is going to take time and energy, and who's going to pay for us to be able to essentially find needles in haystacks? 
X. Um, but what do you think? You think that we're barking up the I've always felt like this. When it comes to piracy, we're always barking up the wrong tree when we're trying to find these culprits. But we're not talking about Joe Schmo, Jane, and Joe down the block that are pirating mm -hmm. material, for example. We're talking about huge online outfits that are benefiting by offering the material, be it software, music, movies, online for free or at some sort of uh, ability Just where they can, mm -hmm. they can make money from it. And that's really what this is about, trying to uh, capture some of the lost revenue from piracy. What do you think? Um, well, it, you think that first of all, do you think their German courts are right to have the cable companies be the ones behind trying to find the the pirates? Not so much a major part of it, but a, a part of it. Right. Not the major part again, because if you know when stuff starts coming down the pipeline like that, you do want to know where it comes from. Right. And with those companies, you initially have to sign up with them first. Right. So I can see why the German court is saying that because it starts with you providing that initial service for them. Now, once they, you get that I, what, ISP address... Yeah. Or, uh, no, I, when you get the IP address. Yeah, yeah, when you get those addresses and all of that type of stuff as the identifier, then it can be, as you said, masked and all those other things. So I'm really I interested think, to see what would happen if they applied this ruling into the U.S. courts. I think that, first of all, they'd be freaking out because well, companies are not trying to spend time to be looking for digital pirates if the outfits themselves, say the labels or, or mm -hmm. organizations like that, haven't had any luck. Why would the uh, cable companies feel like they could fare better? Well, probably because they, they see that when people have issues with other people, you know, we can just call up the um, those cable companies and say, you know, we have issues with such, such, and such, and such, and such, and what they will do, they will actually disconnect that right. service. That's what they're essentially arguing, that the that the cable company has the ability and the capacity to, to just you. disconnect that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Let's take another break. When we come right back, we're going to break down some of the 2016 predictions right here on the Freedom Radio Hour. Capital Radio 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of today. And we're back right here, live on Capital Radio, 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sudan. You're live and direct right here on the Freedom Radio Hour, your number one source for music business news and trends from around the globe. Now we're talking about 2016 predictions and what you see will be changing in terms of the music industry. Here's a couple of things. There's an article at freedomradiohour.com you can peruse and read at your leisure that breaks down uh, some of the predictions. But here's some of them. Mm -hmm. First of all, they're saying there's going to be a switch. I think you might appreciate this. You know, our biggest argument with some of the popular music out there is that it's not real songs. It's essentially like tracks with a quick little loop and somebody singing over top of it. Mm -hmm. It's not like what you and I grew up with, with beginning and ends and middles and bridges and chord changes and that kind of thing. Well, one of the predictions for 2016 is that the, the real song will make a comeback. That's what they're calling it, real songs. Which means real, so real songs are out there, it's just that the radio and the well, public chooses not to play them. Well, well now they're saying <laughs> with, uh, with you have artists like Adele who's smashing records right now, her album went triple platinum in like two days or something mm -hmm. crazy like that. Shout out to Adele. But her songs are mostly ballads and very like thoughtful and melodic and they don't have a a lot of processing to them. It's very uh, stripped down acoustic style and she's faring very, very well in that kind of arrangement. Mm -hmm. So they're saying 2016, you're gonna see more of this sort of uh, feeling, the real songs with bridges and breakdowns and stuff, which I'm really happy to hear, you know, but I, I also, I'm always skeptical because, because of the short attention span we give to music. Mm -hmm. It's like well, what we even appreciate, uh, chord changes and such. I often talk about this with Josh Milan, shout out to Honeycomb, but um, he, he'll tell me he's like I don't know if people would even appreciate core changes and bridges and, and endings and beginnings like they used to because they just want like quick consumption you know you well think? that's basically because that's all we get when we hear music we get quick consumptions we get about two minutes or three minutes at the most of a song and that's it and then right. usually when DJs are DJ and I know many before the song even gets to the hook real good they moved on to another song. They sure have. <laughs> they sure have. Yeah, so they're, they're basically saying for 2016, the real song will have a comeback. Mm -hmm. They also are saying that the live performance will be everything. Mm -hmm. That it really will be the, the biggest pie biggest piece of the pie that exists with if you want to mess around in the music game that live performance is where it's at which which kind of inspires us like you and I need to always we've always talked about doing a, some sort of review or cabaret show of, of some sort mm -hmm. um, I think Eddie inside is like a standards dude like he could really kill some standards so him with like a little cocktail a little piano you know that's the mm -hmm. kind of thing I, I envision for Eddie you know um, 
But we've always wanted to do some sort of live show in that regard, like a sort of review of all of our material, because all of our friends here in New Jersey and around the surrounding areas, very talented. We have a lot of music that's out. We ought to come together and develop a live show. So in talking with that, it seems like 2016 would be the move for us to make any real capital would be to arrange more live performances. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're saying that's for the 2016. They're also saying that um, um, evidently new mic techniques will come out, so it won't be like the auto-tune, it'll be a very stripped down version. I think everything is gonna be like uh, the unprocessing will be 2016. That's some of the prediction. I don't know. But they're saying that <laughs> now it's not going to be like, you know, the heavy processed music. It's going to be more stripped down. So I guess we'll see what happens in the 2016. But I'm really, I want to see this. They're also saying that the, you know, we talked about the Fair Pay, Fair Play Act, which is this idea that we pay better for um, broadcast radio, for example. They do say that some of the predictions will be that we do get performance royalties finally for radio play, which we, did, we don't get right now. So I think that's really helpful in the 2016. They need to come around and change sort of a lot, you know. So I'm really looking forward to see what the 2016 is, but I am a little bit concerned that we'll spend another year not doing anything or making any progress in terms of the um, the royalty board. You know, they're supposed to meet and talk about some of the rates that are being paid out there and things like radio mm -hmm. and whether we ought to be paid for our royalties, performance royalties on radio. Um, and so I hope they come to a decision soon because it, we've been talking about these particular issues now for coming on two to three years. Mm -hmm. And there's been no um, movement fast enough, I think, about these things, because we need to make some more money. This is ridiculous. Oh, I concur. <laughs> but anyway, the other thing, the last point they're saying is that everything's going to be about subscription services, which we always talk about. So I'm really looking forward to maybe talking about what can we do to develop that on our end. Maybe there ought to be some sort of subscription service that we can offer in some mm -hmm. way or another. Uh, but stay tuned. We're going to talk about that and more on the next episode of the Freedom Radio Hour. That's all, we, that's all the time we have for, for right now. Definitely check out EddieNicholas.com your boy DJ Adam Cruz.com and the Freedom Radio Hour.com for more of this fantastic music and for the articles definitely post under everything that we're posting because we want to know what you have to say about it all Freedom Radio Hour.com that's right people people with Eddie Nicholas Adam Cruz Capital Radio 91.6 FM the heartbeat of the dead ciao